Whooping cough, or pertussis, is a highly contagious respiratory tract infection caused by Bordetella pertussis. The vaccine is considered the most effective preventive measure, with around 90% of children under the age of 2 and over 50% of school-aged children vaccinated. The duration of whooping cough symptoms can vary, but typically progress as follows. After an incubation period of 7 to 10 days, generally without any symptoms, dry spasmodic coughing begins. This phase can last one to two weeks before the watery discharge begins from the nose and mouth. As this phase progresses, the sufferer will experience severe and exhausting coughing spells, followed by long periods where breathing becomes labored. Finally, the coughing spells will subside and the throat clears. The infectiousness of an infected person peaks during the first week of this phase and diminishes over time. Before knowing more about this whooping cough, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to never miss our new health plan. Whooping cough is a highly contagious infection that is spread through contact with discharges from an infected person's mouth or nose by touch. By spreading droplets that become airborne when a person with whooping cough coughs or sneezes, or by sharing contaminated objects such as cups or glasses, infection can also be spread by direct contact with contaminated objects, such as doorknobs. People are most infectious during the early stages of their symptoms, but can remain contagious for several weeks after symptoms begin to improve. Symptomatic transplacental transmission has been documented. Infected persons may be co-infected with other diseases, such as influenza, and can shed Bordetella pertussis for a longer period than those who are not infected by another disease. The best protection against whooping cough is the vaccine. It is 98% effective in preventing infection and severe disease in children under two years old. Vaccination has reduced the incidence of whooping cough from 50,000 reported cases in 1,922 to less than 5,000 reported cases in 1998. In 2014, there were 638 cases of whooping cough confirmed by respiratory culture or serologic testing, with the majority, 93%, occurring among persons less than 18 years old. The vaccine is generally given as a series of five to six shots, with boosters given at four and 11 or 12 years of age. Medications are available to decrease the severity of symptoms. While these medications are generally considered safe in pregnancy, they have not been well studied in this group and should be used with caution. Certain people are more susceptible to whooping cough infection and its complications. Whooping cough can cause serious disease and even death in infants less than one year old, especially those who are unvaccinated, have health problems, or were born prematurely. Infants with pertussis often develop pneumonia before they exhibit classic symptoms, such as coughing spells. Whoop! Infants may start to get sick from whooping cough as soon as three weeks of age and can become severely ill. Younger infants are more likely than older babies or toddlers to develop the most severe complications and are more likely to require hospitalization or intensive care. However, even in those who have been vaccinated against the disease, these complications can occur. Pneumonia is the most common complication associated with whooping cough, but other less common complications include convulsions, seizures, encephalopathy, and rib fractures. In adolescents and adults, pertussis is generally a milder disease than in infants. In the US, roughly half of reported cases occur in infants and toddlers who are too young to be vaccinated. Among such patients, serious complications are rare. For example, only about 1% of infants younger than six months who contracted pertussis were hospitalized for it. Symptoms usually begin two to seven days after exposure. Illness may last for one to two weeks and is often less severe in those with a better immune response, such as those with a history of vaccination or natural immunity to bacterial infections, such as Bordetella paraprotussis, or those from other countries where whooping cough is more common. The symptoms of whooping cough include the disease is diagnosed by a physical examination and by lab testing for the presence of pertussis toxin. 
PCR testing for Bordetella bacteria can also be used to diagnose whooping cough, but it does not detect infection with B. parapertussis, whose symptoms are similar to those of B. pertussis. Furthermore, specific tests for both types of disease have shown inconsistencies in their ability to differentiate between cases of whooping cough and other common infections like pharyngitis or bronchitis, which may lead to misdiagnosis or delayed diagnosis in patients with non-pertussis symptoms. Whooping cough is a highly contagious bacterial infection spread through the airborne droplets produced by coughing or sneezing. Infection can be transmitted through direct contact with mucus or saliva of infected persons and is therefore most often contracted by people who come into contact with infected persons. The bacteria enter the body through a break in the skin, mouth, or nose. After infection begins, it causes inflammation along the membranes lining the airways, which leads to coughs and shortness of breath. Most whooping cough is diagnosed in early childhood. However, the first signs of infection can be seen as early as six weeks. In one study, 14% of people reported having had chickenpox in the previous three years, and the other 86% were either unimmunized or previously immunized against it. In the US, roughly half of reported cases occur in infants and toddlers who are too young to be vaccinated. Among such patients, serious complications are rare. For example, only about 1% of infants younger than six months who contracted pertussis were hospitalized for it. In some parts of the world, whooping cough is endemic, common. How to deal with a whooping cough as an adult? Antibiotics have been used to treat whooping cough, but their efficacy is unknown, and there is a risk of increasing antibiotic resistance. They also have a small effect in decreasing severity for the first few days, but cannot stop progression of the disease. In those with weak immune systems, Antibiotics are still recommended because they may prevent complications such as pneumonia and encephalitis. Bacteria which cause whooping cough cannot become antibiotic resistant because that requires gene mutation. Cough suppressants such as dextromethorphan and cotein may help with the coughs. Other medications that may reduce the severity and duration of whooping cough include prednisone, chlorpheniramine, dexamethasone, and diphenhydramine. Although antibiotics are generally not used to treat whooping cough in adults, antibiotics are sometimes given to prevent hospitalization and complications in those with weak immune systems. In 2016, a 66-year-old woman was diagnosed with whooping cough in England after spending all her life previously believing that she had asthma. Her case was published in a medical journal, highlighting the complexities of diagnosing whooping cough. Pertussis is thought to have first been recognized in 16th century Italy, although a faint awareness of the disease may extend back to ancient Greece and 15th century Germany. Over the years, pertussis has been referred to by many names including Inconsumptio adenini, John Fleming, 1615, Paroxysmala pertussis, Thomas Sydnemon, Tussif Qatar, Richard Martin, the 100-day cough, and the six-week cough. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned new things about the whooping cough and how to get rid of it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to let us know if this worked for you and how it affected your body. Thanks for watching this video, and if you want more videos on how to boost your metabolism, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.